Um, so joining us today, we're really thrilled um, to have Jessica Smolinski, uh, who you can see on the screen there. Uh, Jessica is a sculpture trained photographer whose work merges photography, sculpture, installation, and handcrafts. She's inspired by traditional domestic crafts, specifically quilting, hence the connection, because of the overlap of form and function and of making and caring. As a photographer, Jessica documents serendipitous moments of her day-to-day -day and family life. She then cuts, recomposes, and sews the photos together to form new fragmented relationships, which become quilt-like patterns and designs. So that's a very brief statement, and I'll, I'm sure Jessica will expand upon it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, close off my video, mute myself, pass it over to Jessica. And again, if there's any questions or comments, um, use the features at the bottom. But otherwise, enjoy, and I'll, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, I just wanted to quickly thank the Historical Society for this opportunity. And I wanted to thank um, Catherine for um, taking an interest in my work at uh, seeing it at Jennifer Terzian's gallery, which is just across the street from the Historical Society in Litchfield. Um, I and my husband were just in a show together that closed there. Um, and that's where Catherine saw my work. And I just also wanted to thank um, Kate and Alex for coordinating um, tonight's talk. So I'm going to share my screen. And slowly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can everybody see this? I'm assuming yes. Um, oh, and I just wanted to mention too that I'm calling tonight from um, my studio, which is here in New Haven, Connecticut, and it is a converted garage um, that my husband and I share. He's also an artist and um, my two kids as well. They occupy the loft space and um, it's really nice to have this space um, in our backyard. Um, so as Alex mentioned, um, my work for the past few years has been inspired by um, quilt traditions and quilt patterns. And um, I am really drawn to quilts for so many reasons. I feel like um, there's just such a rich tradition in them that, and I love that they um, cross all cultures I love that they are objects that are um, both formal and functional and that they are made for care and with care. Um, I love the endless color possibilities and pattern possibilities. I just think it's, um, I think quilts are, I just think they're fabulous. <laughs> and so I, uh, my grandmother was a quilter, my dad's mom, and I think, I believe she came to quilting later in her life because, um, you know, she raised three boys and she was a super busy woman. Um, and she was very creative and very productive in her life. She was, um, uh, she won many awards for her, in her garden club, for her garden. And she was a, a Boy Scout troop leader and she, uh, always made Christmas ornaments and Christmas cards and whatever and and her own clothes and she um, she made quilts and one of you know I have many vivid memories of her hand stitching quilts uh, on a couch usually in the evenings when she had time to relax uh, my grandfather would be watching tv and she would just be sewing by hand and she was a tiny little woman named Betty and I just felt like uh, these quilts were magical because, um, you know, they would be all folded up on her lap and then suddenly this twin size or queen size quilt would appear. And she, um, she made uh, for me specifically two quilts that I cherish. Um, one you can see here on the screen. This is a photo of my daughter. Uh, when she was younger, wrapped in um, one of the quilts. And my grandmother took, I remember her taking me to the store to pick out all the fabrics for this. And that was just so exciting. And purple was my favorite color as it is my daughter's now. Um, and then this was the other quilt 
that uh, she made for me on the right with the white background. Um, and this is in New Haven Harbor. I did a little photo shoot one day with Olive. Um, this one was made in 93, as you can see. Uh, and then there's just a reference point. My There's a picture of me and my grandmother on the left. You can see she's rather, uh, she's five feet tall and I'm a bit taller. And then that's her on the right looking um, dashing as always <laughs> when she was younger in Buffalo, New York. Um, this is another one of her quilts. I don't know who she made this for, um, but it's another one that I, that I have in my possession. And so I started to use these as a sort of a beginning point. I, and um, I started to project my own photos onto her quilts. And this is the beginning of it all for me. Um, it was a way for me to uh, make a connection to her. You know, she died um, probably, well, soon after I got married, but still I feel like there are so many things that I wish I could ask her now. You know, I she died before I had children and it's just like, um, you know, when you're younger, I or when I was younger, I didn't think to ask certain things and or get to know her in other ways that I wish I could have. And so this was like an attempt to connect to her. Um, and, and also to use this imagery. And so for a while, I was just trying to figure out how do I merge uh, a bunch of loves that I have, quilts, photography, um, and, then the, and then the images that I photograph. Um, and so that was a series that I had done. And then this is a different series in which I used um, her quilts and I would use the, uh, I would take photos of them and manipulate them in Photoshop and overlay them onto my photos. So then it's just sort of like the reverse process of um, me projecting my photos onto her actual quilts. And then I did this other series, which I still like the process conceptually, but as objects, they don't totally work <laughs> because um, what you're looking at here, these are smaller images. Um, they're about six by six squares. And again, these are um, using her, you know, the quilt stars, which is a, a traditional quilt pattern, obviously, but, and, and I superimposed them onto one of my photos, but then, what I did was I um, actually painted this, the stars with a saltwater solution, a heavily concentrated saltwater solution. And so when the water dries, what's left is the um, salt crystals. And I love the idea of this. I love the idea of the saltwater with the imagery, you know, the ocean. And I also love that uh, the saltwater, like, um, is sort of, you know, we're kind of composed of salt water in our, in our tears and sweat. As objects, they're not very successful because um, when, the humidity, when the humidity fluctuates, uh, they get, they kind of liquefy a little bit, or when it's very dry, the salt crystals will flake off. Um, but one day I'll, I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> um, and then after all of that, I sort of, figured out that I could actually just merge these ideas that I had been working through by taking my photos and treating the photos like fabric and cutting them and then sewing them as quilt squares. And so this, um, these are the first three that I had done and these are tiny, they're probably three by three each. Um, and again, these are photos taken uh, of my daily life. Uh, the one on the left is of a, um, a painting that's on view at the Yale Art Gallery, which is where I work as a photographer. Um, and then 
uh, four years ago, my mother died. And these, this is a photo, two photos of my mother with my children, um, Leo on the left and Olive on the right. And those are at different times. They're not the same ages, so they look like it here. Um, but this was, this was a moment. This was a really uh, defining, difficult, tragic moment in my life. And sort of my studio practice stopped for a while. We actually moved. Um, and and it, while it was really difficult, it was also, uh, I, I kind of think of it as a, a bit of a, a restart. Um, after we moved, we, we moved into this place and renovated this space and made this studio. And so um, everything shifted and I feel like my, my work has been um, a little bit more clear since her death. And I've been a, perhaps a little bit more focused with the work. Um, I think that the studio has become um, a place for me to just process. Uh, you know, I think sewing for me has a very meditative quality. And so I'm, I'm able to like, uh, do a lot of thinking and do a lot of processing. And it's been a healing space, which is, which has been lovely. Um, so these are, I, you know, I sort of jumped back in with the quilt squares again, but what I realized was that I could use photos. I didn't have to use photos that I had just taken. I could start to um, use some old photos and some new photos and really start to overlap time in imagery. And this has been uh, just sort of a fun, a fun thing to explore. Um, and it also not just overlaps time, but over, they, they can overlap in place. So for instance, the bird you see here was a bird that I held in Minnesota. And the, uh, the I don't know if it's Vinca vine or Black Eyed Susan, um, but the, you know, that was in my backyard. Um, so this was a series that I explored for a little while. And then I um, decided to take that same quilt square and recreate that purple quilt that I showed you earlier of my grandmother's. And so um, this one was very much about Betty and <laughs> that uh, I spent a lot of time, they had a house on the beach in the summers that they would rent my grandparents and my sister and I would stay there. And so I, I connect my grandmother um, to the water. And she also had a bird, a, a sparrow when I was growing up. And anyway, um, so I decided to actually go for it and, and recreate her pattern with photos. And this is a detail shot. And these are made, um, in strips so these are each individual strips and so they're they're almost they almost function um also as like uh vertical blinds <laughs> which i didn't anticipate but when i but when i hang them up they they can they move like vertical blinds do and i guess i should back up a little bit and just say that um i take photographs i print them myself and then i cut them and then I sew them together by, um, on the back, I use a linen tape that's used for book binding. And then I, I can sew at the seams through the tape, which is uh, reinforced. It reinforces the paper a bit. Um, and then this is another piece that I made that um, was on view here in New Haven at the Yale Health Plan. It's um, the medical building where um, that services uh, staff, faculty, and students, and it's where all the doctors are. Um, and so this piece is called um, Give Care, Take. I believe. <laughs> and um, it's the same uh, repeated pattern that you see, but uh, overall it creates an irregular shape. And um, 
this is a, you know, sort of a breakaway from the quilt itself. But here's a up close detail. And again, for these pieces, I'm like understanding that I can recycle imagery and have them mean different things um, in different pieces. And here it is on view in the main lobby. And then um, I was happy to be able to see the show on view at the Historical Society. And I was really drawn to um, these two pieces that were on view. And the, um, I just love the irregular shapes of these. Um, with the, the piece on the left, I love the bottom cutouts for the posters of the bed. Um, and then the pockets on the right, I just, I had actually never seen um, those pockets before. And I just, I think they're so great. I love them as objects and I love them. Um, I love just the, the idea too of uh, conceptually as an art piece of, you know, sort of what do we hold on to or what do we keep close to us? And I think, um, I think they're really beautiful. Um, I then after that uh, piece at the health plan, I started to, I jumped back into the, the star again. And so these are uh, a bit larger now. I think they're about 18 inches by 18 inches. And I went ahead and made a bunch of these in all different color combinations. Um, and have figured out that with all of these smaller component parts that I'm making, they can be reconfigured time and time again. And that has been a, a fun exploration and very freeing. Um, and here are the stars, these stars are on view at, they were on um, in an exhibit called Mill Street, which was in Fairhaven and it opened and closed right before the pandemic, the world shut down. Um, but this was a great piece because I uh, suspended it from the ceiling and tied the loose strings that I leave on the pieces together at the corners. And so it, um, it, it's actually about three feet away from the wall in the back and just hanging from the ceiling. And here's a detail shot. And then this is a, a friendship ring traditional quilt pattern. Um, this was also on view at Jennifer's gallery. Uh, the strings, I, I tend to leave loose and um, I think of them as, you know, sort of a, the process, the process of life, the process of making. Um, and also, Sometimes I think about as I'm sewing and I'm like stitching through perhaps, you know, a bird's eye or flowers or whatever. Um, it's like, I think of the stitched line as life, as it, as it being a constant and sort of like moving through different times and places. Uh, this is a piece, um, a lattice piece called, uh, I, I'm sorry, it's called Spring Lattice, um, that I made during quarantine. And I decided to photograph all of the beautiful things in bloom in spring because, oh, the world felt so dark. And so I just wanted like bold, bold color. Um, and then if you can see the, the uh, bright green, medical gloved hand, which is an image that I've used, that I used, I've used over and over again. It's actually my hand holding a baby wren that had been kicked out of the nest. Um, but it, the, the glove felt so relevant to the pandemic. And so I liked the comparison of the natural spring colors with this very uh, plastic medical color. Um, and this is a large piece that was actually in that corner <laughs> of this studio. 
Um, and then uh, coming to recently, this was this past summer, uh, my, my family and I, we did an artist, a family artist residency at Wasaic Project in Wasaic, New York. And um, we spent two weeks here in July and Joe and I were each given two studios, which was amazing. And our kids had uh, full access to what's called the nest, which is the slide on the right, um, which is a large kids space. And because they weren't doing any public programming, my kids had full access um, to all the supplies and to the tables. And then I also had <laughs> access to the tables, which are amazing because they were so big. So um, knowing that we had Jennifer's show that was going to open in the fall, we had a deadline at the residency. And that also was amazing because um, uh, my studio practice is not, I, I can't say that it's consistent. You know, life takes over with kids with very busy schedules and work and whatnot. Um, but to be able to break away from that, my our normal lives and go for two weeks without any interruption and just have studio space was a gift. It was like being in school again, but with kids. And so um, I, I knew that I wanted to make these uh, large, very large pieces to, to, to show on her main wall when you walk into the space. And so that's where I made um, two out of the three perennial stars that were on view in the exhibition. And so here on the right, you can get a sense of um, how this piece is constructed. I'll show the full image of it in a bit. But um, just due to the limitations of my machine, I don't have a quilting machine. I just, you know, it's a traditional sewing machine. Um, I can only sew about, I don't know, 18 inches long at the most because it's, I can't um, fold the photos in a way, in the ways that I could with fabric. Um, and sewing with photos is really interesting because they're, I love that um, the paper is so rigid. I find that to be uh, easy to work with, with sewing. And yet, um, you know, they're not flexible, so I can't crease them. And also sewing through the photos, I have to be extremely precise. And so if the bobbin thread runs out and I'm sewing and I've poked a bunch of holes and then I have to sort of manually go back and stitch and make sure that I'm not um, stitching out of the holes that I've already made. Uh, so as I mentioned, we were given two studios. One was an incredible barn space, an actual barn with a leaky roof and everything, which is not conducive <laughs> to photography. But we were also given each a smaller clean space, which is where I did the sewing. Um, but being able to put these pieces up in the barn was incredible. I just, I loved the architecture of the space and um, it's, it, it, yeah, it was just, it was a really great backdrop. Um, and so here we are uh, where this is Jennifer's gallery. I don't know if anyone here at the talk was able to see the exhibition, but it was called A Bird in Hand. Um, and here you can see the three pieces that I made. Each of these stars, they're called perennial stars, and they're each um, seven feet by seven feet. Um, and these are definitely the largest pieces I've made so far. And um, I want to make even, even larger ones. <laughs> Here are some detail shots of each of the three pieces. Oops. They each have um, sort of consistent themes. There's a, an architectural um, element to each of them, which was uh, 
photographs of my mother's apartment after she had died. I, I documented her space. Um, birds, balloons, trapped balloons in the landscape, and then um, my children. Um, and so here I just wanted to show some of the photos that I tend to use over and over and that um, were in the perennial stars. And I, I just, um, I come back to life cycles a lot in my work. I come, I love, um, I love imagery of both celebration and joy and, uh, you know, loss and life. I think that, um, uh, things that are beautiful and things that are sad at the same time. That's what inspires me. <laughs> and so then I just wanted to talk about um, where my work is going. You know, previous or everything that I've shown so far is of quilt patterns, but it's actually not quilting. And so, um, this is a piece that I actually made a few years ago, but I've come back to recently and just the idea of stitching onto a photo and what does that look like. Um, and so these are some of my newer works, again, repeating imagery, um, but more like a, a collaged piece, a irregular collage. And these are all um, inspired by traditional Japanese boro quilting. Um, in which, so, you know, I believe the tradition is that uh, clothing was made of hemp and so therefore it wasn't as durable as cotton clothing. And so um, they would be repaired with, you know, new squares of fabric and then stitched over to reinforce and make stronger. And so this has become, uh, this tradition has, you know, I think I'm sure there are people that can speak to this more than I can, but um, it's a rich tradition and it's still used today and it's used in fashion and it's used in quilting and, um, and I'm really drawn, drawn to it. And then the other thing is too, I've been imagining, um, so having had that barn space was amazing and it inspired the uh, barn quilts that can be seen or the quilt trail across the, our country. And um, I just, I love these ideas. I love them as, you know, objects, I, decorative objects. I love them as symbols. And so I was imagining my piece on the exterior of a, a building. And so I've actually proposed this as an object and it, and it will change, it won't be photographs. I think it'll be um, photographs printed on aluminum, but I like this idea of, you know, what does it mean if these change material or become outdoor pieces? Um, concept drawing. So that is it for me for now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Well, that was, thank you so much. I'm, uh, this is my, I have my dog with me and she was begging for attention, but thank <laughs> you so much, Jessica. That was really, uh, really amazing to see all those different pieces. Um, so we're opening up for questions. So if anyone has questions or anything they want to um, mention or just ask, please use the Q&A feature. I have that open as well. Um, for me, just listening, and I wrote down borrow quilting because now I'm gonna go look at that because um, I'm always always interested to learn more about new, um, new fabric art traditions. Uh, but just what I really liked about your piece, the first time I saw it and talked a little bit about this, but I just love watching the sort of the evolution of quilting as, as 
you know, something that was of a necessity at one point, it's become an art form. And now there are artists who are using the idea of quilting, the, the, some of the traditional quilting, but using different materials and bringing it out of just making, you know, bed or essentially bed coverings. And like you, you do with using different patterns and, um, you know, other artists who are making digital art and printing it onto fabric and then quilting that. And I saw one artist who was um, appliquing fabric pieces like quilt, but right onto a canvas instead of a, instead of a quilt, um, quilt top. So I think there's a really a lot of interesting things happening with contemporary artists who are, who are fans of the quilting tradition, but using it in a different way. And I'm really fascinated to see that. And you can see it in your work as well that, you know, you, you talk about moving forward and doing new things and trying things that are even more quilting, like run, using the running stitch across all those pieces. So that was really wonderful for me to see. Um, so we have some questions um, coming in. So uh, Kate asks, uh, was there any reason you were drawn to the particular quilt pattern of the star, the eight-pointed star that, that shows up quite often? Um, I, I love the, the traditional, yeah, the Lone Star. Um, it's funny though, like I, I, I can't say that I've connected it to a specific culture for me personally, but I, I, I admire that star for sure. Um, and just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I, as someone who came to quilts pretty late through, through working at the historical society, I think, um, so like I've definitely have certain patterns that I'm just drawn to that I just look at and they make me, you know, happier. They, um, the ones I seek out, my favorite is a uh, um, log cabin. And that's only because we got a log cabin quilt donated that was spectacular. Um, mm -hmm. And I only really saw it in the deliberation process sort of folded up. And then it wasn't until I got it on the wall for this exhibit that I really saw it for what it was. And now I have a log cabin quilt behind me and they're, they're, they become definitely my favorite, so. Yeah, and you know, I think that like exploring these patterns too is, it, that's like a question I would have for my grandmother, you know, like what, why was she drawn to the those shapes that she made? You know, was it inspired by the fact that she was German or, you know, I, I don't know. And I think, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, Carol asks if you were a quilter or sewer before you started um, doing the paper sewing. So, you know, did you, did you ever make a, a, a traditional quilt or were, were you pretty versed in sewing? I've, no, quilting? I've yet to make an act like a, a full size quilt. I've made a few baby blankets, uh, which were more like applique than a uh, full on quilt, but I've, I've been sewing for most of my life. And actually my grandmother taught me how to sew. So yeah. And I, I sewed my first camera bag because <laughs> I always love taking photos. <laughs> Um, is there, so other than your, your, this is a question for me, other than your um, grandmother, is there, is there a particular quilter or, an, or a fabric artist that, that you, you enjoy today or one that you like to go see? Or? Yeah, there's, I mean, there are a lot of artists that I, I'm drawn to right now that I have, are, I think, doing really interesting things with quilts. And, um, well, Faith Ringgold, of course, I love her work and I love her, just the way that storytelling is such a prevalent part of her process. Um, I love uh, Sanford Biggers and I love um, uh, Hank Willis Thomas. I think he's a genius with his work. He uses a lot of quilt imagery and Wendy Redstar. I love, um, she actually had a, a show up in the kids space at Mass Mocha a year or two ago. And um, also doing like really interesting things with color and quilt patterns and um, photography. So uh, yeah, those are those are people that I'm really keen on. And then um, also just, you know, I as I mentioned, I was curious about the fact that you talked to the curator from the Boston MFA, but I haven't seen the show in person, but um, Virginia Jacobs with that quilt ball is yeah. that looks yeah. amazing, <laughs> and so yeah. I I need to learn more about her because that's that's a great piece. Yeah, the um, and this was a, a session for the the viewers that that um was at the Concord Museum, the the curator for the Fabric of a Nation quilt at MFA, and in the presentation she showed photographs of that being sort of blown up, and it was just you know an incredibly different way to think about quilts um, yeah. and what they can do. Um, 
so yeah, that, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that exhibit as well. Um, and one for me, and it's you know probably one that people are familiar with, but uh, Beast of Butler's work is just you know I, I can't I've never seen one in person. I have her book. I've watched all every you know YouTube video <laughs> made that she did, but I'm looking forward to seeing her work as well. Um, so if for our viewers who weren't able to go to the gallery, are there plans to have any of your work on view anywhere else or coming up where they might be able to go see it in person? Um, I don't have anything in the works right now, but I'm hoping to because I've I've amassed a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah I, I'm not sure yet. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll be, if you let us know, we'll be happy to share it with our, with our museum patrons as well um, on our social media. Um, and then there was one more question, which I, um, the Japanese quilting that you talked about was called Boro, right? B-O-R-O, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, well, if, are there any, if anyone has any other questions, um, go ahead and drop those in. Um, but otherwise, I just want to thank you, Jessica, again for, for that great presentation. I really enjoyed seeing the sort of evolution of your work, having only seen the pieces that um, we're at the gallery um, and seeing some of the other work you've done and just hearing about your your approach and how you frame your art through quilting is excellent. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And then I have I have some announcements from the society. So um, thank you for putting a picture of our, our quilt show as well. And I'm glad you were able to come see it. Um, that, that quilt exhibit, um, Stitching Stories, will be up through November 28th, the Sunday after Thanksgiving is when we, we close our museums this year. Um, we're open Thursday through Sunday, so you can come see them then and you can get more information on our website. Um, if you're not able to see it, we are going to make um, that exhibit into a, a virtual exhibit, which we host on our website, and we'll have images of each of the quilts we had up throughout the course of the show with all the information, so you can look at that as well. Um, and then the week after, um, I think it's December 1st in the evening, we're planning on doing a special closing reception, reception for our quilt show, so that'll be sort of the last, last chance to come see them. Um, oh, we have another question. Someone asked... <laughs> Um, I think based on one of the early photographs you showed um, about, do you really put your quilts on the sand? <laughs> That's, I, which is I really good. did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Not a lot. I just the one time. Just yeah, for that, for that. <laughs> um, and then the last thing from us is we have one more quilt program planned, um, and that's Thursday, December second at seven o'clock here on Zoom. Um, and we're going to have quilt historian and author Sue Reich um, join us, and she's going to give a talk about holiday um, special holiday quilts. It's a holiday themed. It should be great to get everyone in the spirit. Um, but otherwise, I just want to thank everyone, everyone for attending. And um, thank you for joining us tonight. And if there are questions anyone has after we're closed, feel free to email anyone at the society and we can forward them on to Jessica and give you an answer. But um, otherwise, just thank you everyone for joining. And thank you again, Jessica, for, for agreeing to do this talk for us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.